Well, somebody made off with my notes. <laughs> so we're going to wing it. <laughs> Welcome to the 2022 Jesus Community Church Variety Show. Uh, we intentionally do not call it a talent show, but there's going to be a lot of variety. <laughs> so uh, if you would, bow your heads. We're going to open with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for the gift of your son. We thank you that you chose to step out of heaven and into our world to come to take upon yourself all the sin of the world. We thank you, Jesus, that you went in our place. We thank you for the gift of salvation. And I ask, Father, as we have fellowship tonight, that our hearts and our minds would be keyed in on what we are truly celebrating. And I ask, Father, that you would be blessed to receive our praise and honor tonight. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, so um, does anybody know Kathy, you can't answer. Where's Kathy? Kathy, you can't answer. Neither can you, Angie. Um, anybody besides Kathy and Angie know what today is? Sunday. <laughs> I know where you sleep. <laughs> Anybody else? Oh, first day of Hanukkah. The yeah, that's, that's actually right. Okay. You said the 18th. That wasn't even part of the trivia for tonight. Today is the first day of Hanukkah. Does everybody, everybody know what Hanukkah is? Anybody know what Hanukkah is? You still can't answer, Kathy. <laughs> Okay, Hanukkah, the Festival of Lights. This is a celebration in Israel that, that was uh, instituted in the intertestamental period. Okay? Uh, the Greeks had come down with Alexander. They had been given, literally, they were given the keys to the city. Um, and Greek rule was established in Israel. Now, uh, as time went on, uh, there came into Israel a despotic ruler known as Antiochus IV. He took upon himself the title Epiphanes, uh, basically saying that he was a god. And he uh, despised the Jews. He despised Jewish culture and religion. Uh, he required that any priest that was caught circumcising a Jewish male infant would be executed. He required that they sacrifice, that the Jews would sacrifice offerings to the Greek gods, including himself. Uh, and the story goes that he came, there was a, a, uh, an authority that came into a Jewish village, required them to make a sacrifice, and when one of the Jewish leaders stepped forward to make sacrifice, uh, a man by the name of Joseph Maccabeus stepped forward and killed this, this uh, Jewish leader. And this instituted the revolt, the Maccabean revolt, whereby the Jews, with absolutely no military uh, no army, no background or training overthrew the Greek rulers and brought about Jewish independence. Now when this was done, the Jews reclaimed their temple and they needed to purify the temple and they needed to light the menorah in the temple. The problem is they did not have any oil that had been sanctified to God and the process was going to take about seven days to accomplish. They found just a very small amount of oil. They prayed and asked God to extend the life of this oil until new oil could be made and sanctified. Uh, the oil actually lasted for eight days. This was the miracle of Hanukkah. Uh, we actually, if you uh, know anything about the Jewish uh, temple, you know that there's the menorah, the lamp that is in the temple that has seven branches. Um, this is actually not a menorah, this is a Hanukkah, okay? And if you'll note, it has nine places. Uh, I'm sorry, my grandson just bounced off of the wall yeah. over here. Uh, and, and so you have the servant's candle that is in the middle, and then you have a candle for each day represented for Hanukkah. And this being the first day, um, let's see. Uh, Gaylene, would you come and light the candle for me? You're going to light the servant's candle, yeah. and then we're going to use the servant's candle to light the first light of Hanukkah. Now, what's interesting about this is that this festival was not appointed of God. It's not one of the spring or fall festivals. 
But what's interesting is that the scripture tells us that Jesus actually celebrated the festival of lights. So uh, on the first night of Hanukkah, we take the servant candle and we use it to light, to light, to light. There we go. And the Jews would then start the festival of lights. Now, all of that is free, absolutely no charge for that. But because we are having a variety show with a lot of people moving up and down the stage, uh, for safety's sake, we're just gonna go ahead and put these out. So, uh, there, you got free. Next year when we do the, the uh, trivia during uh, the service, you guys will know and you'll all be able to answer correctly, right? Yes. You look really confused. The menorah has seven? Seven, yeah. It has a servant candle and then three branches on each side. Yeah. Okay, so um, I have my annual bag of candy in between each uh, presentation. I'll be giving you a trivia question. The person that answers it right gets a piece of candy chunked at him. There you go, Hannah. Ah, you missed. All right. Okay, so um, tonight, uh, as, as part of uh, just remembering Hanukkah, Jesus participated in Hanukkah, Angie is going to share a song with us that she wrote for this event. Um, I'm going to turn these lights down. Are you guys cold, hot? Okay. See, it feels really hot in here. Okay. Well, I might turn on the fans a little bit later. I'm going to bring this down just a little bit. Is that okay, Andy? Uh, yeah. Is okay. Okay, I wrote the song. Wow. Um, 1995. So, anyway, um, I like to write historical kind of songs, and um, this one is just like an overview of what Hanukkah is, is and the history of it.
work long hours inside the holy place to dedicate kids around you. They got to come up with it on their own. All right, first, first question of the night. What was the name of the angel that spoke to Mary? Whoa, I saw this hand right here first. I, shouting it out isn't going to help you. It's the one that puts your hand up first. All right, now I actually have a lot of them. I was going to chuck them, but we've got visitors tonight, and I don't want to peg any of them. <laughs> My aim isn't that great. All right, so the angel that, that uh, spoke to Mary was named Gabriel. Next up on our list, anonymous? Oh, no, it's me. But, but it's you. Yes, I'll explain. <laughs> okay, so you're going to get up and you're going to do a shepherd's story. Correct. I'll explain. Okay, so he'll explain because I don't know. <laughs> Okay, I don't know how many of you have your paper, but um, the one I have says, anonymous guest sharing a shepherd's story. I am not an anonymous guest, I am Benjamin. Um, the anonymous part, yeah, the anonymous part is the person who wrote this short story. Um, he or she asked me to read it for the variety show. So just get comfortable and I will read it to you. Um, hopefully it blesses you. Okay. <clears throat> Eliakim, son of Zadok of the tribe of Asher, nudged the sheep before him, snapping its attention from a nearby weed, back to returning to the flock. The ewe trotted downhill toward the greater flock, a collection of indiscernible gray lumps in the dim moonlight. Most of them had settled down for the night, and the other shepherds reclined nearby or made slow circles around the sheep. Eliakim picked one out, a boy of eleven years, a rod in his left hand and a staff in his right. The boy saw Eliakim as he approached behind the wayward sheep and walked over to meet him. How has the flock been, Malcolm? Eliakim asked quietly. Good father, Malcolm answered, matching his father's volume. Nothing unusual. Eliakim nodded. Good. There were a great many visitors in Bethlehem these days, what with the census and all that. Eliakim was surprised at how many people were tied to the house of bread. But many people meant many sheep would be wanted. Beyond that, the Feast of Booths had ended not two weeks ago, which meant a great many burnt offerings. It was a good time to be a shepherd. Go ahead and rest, son, Eliakim said, placing a hand on Malcolm's shoulder. I can keep watch for a few hours. Malcolm looked up there his big eyes peering through curly locks of dark hair beneath his head covering. Are you sure? I can stay up for a while. Eliakim raised a hand to express his assurance. Malcolm looked at him for a moment before nodding and heading away, finding a comfortable place to sleep. Eliakim stroked his beard as the boy went. He was a good lad, well on his way to memorizing the Torah. Goodness, would Malcolm really be 12 in a matter of months? He would be a good husband and father one day 
and a good brother to his yet unborn sibling. Eliakim pulled his eyes back to the flock and began walking between them. Rahab had visited them with her sister a few days ago. The first time he had seen her since the festival, she looked very pregnant. Eliakim only prayed that the Lord would allow him to be there when his second child was born. Suddenly, a light exploded before him. He immediately clenched his eyes shut as he stumbled back. But a great purple afterimage decorating his vision, Eliakim tripped over something, landing flat on his back as the sheep all began crying out. As his vision recovered, he sat up to find the sheep all scrambling this way and that, their shadows long and black against the powerful luminescence that still shone before him. What was that in its center? Was that a man? He wasn't sure, but it was certainly a humanoid figure. He was towering in his height and wore a dazzling white tunic, but his eyes, by the bones of Elisha, those eyes, their light shone brightly, defined against the rest of his radiance, powerful as a blazing fire and unyielding as the sea. His appearance was awesome and terrifying. Eliakim had to collect his thoughts and succeeded only in having the sense to scramble away from this thing. His hurried glances told him the other shepherds were doing the same as chaotic as the sheep. But then the radiant one spoke, his voice as mighty as a storm, yet as gentle as a mother's kiss. Fear not, he said, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Eliakim returned to his shaking feet, holding his hands out in front of his eyes in a feeble attempt to block the light. Good news? A joy for all the people? Was this a messenger of the Lord here to liberate them from the Roman oppression? The Radiant One continued, For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the anointed Lord, and this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a trough. Eliakim's mind reeled as he tried to comprehend what this herald was saying. A Savior, the Anointed, the Mashiach. The Mashiach had been born in Bethlehem, as had been foretold. But if that was so, why would it be told to a group of shepherds of all people? Why not the scribes, or the Pharisees, or the king, or the emperor? Surely the knowledge of this momentous event would be more significant in their hands than in Eliakim's. And did the angel say the Savior would be found in a trough? The son of David, the rightful heir to the throne of Jerusalem, would be found where animals fed? As Eliakim pondered, he was interrupted by his entire vision lighting up. As one angel had appeared, so now a great many more stood with the first one. And they raised their hands as words began pouring from their mouths in unison. Glory to God in the highest, they roared with voices of might, lifting praise to something that was far, far mightier. And on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. They continued shouting their worship of the Most High as they began ascending, floating gently on an unseen force until the entire host was taken out of Eliakim's sight. Eliakim recovered enough to return to his feet and looked about to find, to find the other shepherds as stunned as he was. Malcolm had even had his hands to the sides of his head as he rocked back and forth. Eliakim rushed to him and he told the boy, and he held him as he looked into his eyes. It is all right, my son, he said. Did you not hear what they said? Fear not. They came to tell us that the Mashiach has been born. He is in Bethlehem right now. Let us go over to Bethlehem, one of the others said, and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. Eliakim nodded, standing up from Malcolm's side. Let us see the anointed Lord. The ascent into the village passed by very quickly for Eliakim, due to both his excitement and his speed. A distant part of him was amused by the surprised or annoyed looks from the Bethlehemites as he and the other shepherds hustled through the crowds. A feeding trough. They needed to find a trough, but that could be found anywhere. Nearly every large house had its animals out front. Why would anyone, especially a woman with child, be forced out there? There was a shocking number of people here. Eliakim knew that the city had more people than usual, but he couldn't even find a place where people weren't. How are they supposed to... There, a large two-story two -story house, the house of Jacob, if Eliakim recalled correctly, stood before him. Its lower level was probably a stable. Eliakim poked his head inside the door. A few donkeys were there, even a horse. But near the animals was a trough, dragged away from them and drawn near to a couple that sat before it, looking as weary as any travelers Eliakim had seen. And that was ignoring the fact that the young mother had likely just given birth. The woman rested her, hen, her head against her husband 
who wrapped it, an arm around her shoulders. Eliakim's heart leapt. Over here, he cried to the other shepherds before swinging the door open and rushing to the trough. He was intercepted by the husband, who had stepped between Eliakim and the trough, holding a warding, thick-fingered hand up. Eliakim stumbled to a stop before him. Shalom, Eliakim said. I'm Eliakim, son of Zadok, of the tribe of Asher. The man smiled cordially, despite his ringed eyes. Eliakim, shalom. I am Joseph, son of Jacob, of the tribe of Judah. He gestured to the young woman sitting nearby. This is my wife, Mary. The man had relaxed, but still did not move. Eliakim nodded and removed his head cloth, holding it to his chest. My fellow shepherds and I were told that the anointed Lord, the Savior, had been born here tonight. Joseph's eyebrows raised. Who told you this? Eliakim chuckled. The whole situation was difficult for him, his mind to accept. Angels, he answered. A whole host of them visited us as we watched over our flocks. Joseph, they told us we could find the child lying in a trough. Joseph's expression, initially suspicious of Eliakim's account, broke into a smile. He looked to his wife, who was wearing the same expression. Joseph gave a chuckle, not unlike Eliakim's. Yes, he finally said. This is the child, conceived of the Holy Spirit, and born of a virgin woman. His name is Jesus. Joseph stood back from the trough, and Eliakim and his fellow shepherds crowded around him. In it slept a baby, still ruddy from the freshness of birth and wrapped in brown swaddling cloths. Eliakim was surprised by how ordinary he appeared. Eliakim looked, and to his right stood Malcolm, looking at the baby with reverent eyes. Eliakim rested a hand on his son's shoulder. This is him, son, he said quietly. This is the prophesied one, the seed of the woman, who will bruise the head of the serpent. This is the one the virgin has conceived, the one they will call Emmanuel. This is the great light upon those who have walked in darkness. This is the one upon whom the government will rest. This is the mighty counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting father, and the prince of peace. This is the one who will uphold the kingdom of David with justice and righteousness forevermore by the zeal of the Lord of hosts. And his name is Jesus. Thank you, anonymous writer and Benjamin. Um, second question. The first question, uh, the, the angel, we know the name was Gabriel. So the according to the New Testament, who is the first person that Gabriel spoke to? Pachow! Wow! Zechariah. Ho! Wow. <laughs> Give that to him, please. <laughs> Watch, they all twitch. Here we go. Here's another one. Ready? There you go. All right. So next we have um, R Ruth. Where's Ruth? Ruth. All right. The Sunday school kids will be coming up and sharing some songs with us. So all of the Sunday school kids, up to the front, please. Okay?
Alright, was that, was that a non-purpose solo? Yes. Okay. Alright, way to go Declan. Where are you? Good job, Declan. Where'd he go? Back here. There you are. Good job, Declan. Wow, last year he wouldn't even sing. Alright, uh, next trivia question. Which gospel account most completely covers the birth of Jesus? Oh! You didn't look at my notes, did you? No. <laughs> All right, Zach. Luke. Which chapter? Two. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, you don't like those. Oh, here, I'm going to give you a kiss. <laughs> All right, so up next. Um, oh, they're already out. Mary Ruth and Angie are going to be doing a silent night. Let's rephrase. 
In Luke chapter 2, who was the governor of Syria? Caesar Augustus. He was the emperor, but he wasn't the, the governor. Okay, adults, you can answer now. Or can you? I don't know. You might not be able to. Nobody? I'm going to eat the candy myself because I know the answer. I'm going to eat the candy myself because I know the answer. Wow. All right. On the set, go. You can look it up. One, two, three, go. <laughs> oh, Benjamin over there. He wants candy. No, he can't answer. We already asked. Meridius. Meridius. Who is it? Meridius. Yeah, get that. Pass that on to Google. All right, so next up. Kenneth, where's Kenneth? There you are. He's going to be jamming on his sack. Doing Oh Holy Night. Or you're not doing Mary Had a Lamb, right? No. Okay. I know. <laughs> coming up to do uh, Family Jamboree, do Lord, but not yet. All right, next question. Who is Zacharias' wife? Zachariah's wife. Oh, it's her hand, she beat you. Wow. Wow, that's impressive. All right, Family Jamboree. Up on the stage for Do Lord. This is going to be really raw. <laughs> <laughs> um, we got together at Thanksgiving and 
we all brought our instruments and started jamming. And, and this song actually works. And we, we, uh, we're having fun with it. But we haven't practiced since or gotten together since. <laughs> and so this is literally a fun and just picture of fun family nights. Jamming on instruments and however it sounds. Even a sword? Oh, yeah. I, we even had a sword play, you know, believe it or not. That's a sword, but, um, he kept rhythm with it. He was a sheep, and it was pretty cool. But um, he didn't want to join us, but we have a box drum over here. Um, let's have fun. Let's just have fun. We don't know what's going to happen. So. <laughs> Do you guys want to get up on the stage? Yeah, no, just get up on the stage. Second part right as well. <laughs> All right, you guys split them. Bethlehem in the house of bread. Ready? Spirit with your bow. Nice. Nice. All right, so Jesus was born in the town of Bethlehem. Bethlehem means the house of bread. Jesus also called himself the bread of life. All right. So next up, um, Marilyn? Oh, oh, yeah, she's here. That's Marilyn. She's going to be 
doing a piano Christmas melody. So basically, like Angie said, I'm just going to go ahead and have fun with this and hope you all enjoy. Alright, let's get to it. Okay, so we are
All right, so uh, Joseph and Mary were in the town of Nazareth. They were called to Bethlehem by the census. How did they get from Nazareth to Bethlehem? On a donkey. Wrong. <laughs> what does scripture tell us? How did they get to Bethlehem? Okay, this is kind of a quick uh, a trick question. It doesn't say. Scripture doesn't say. We do know this. They didn't drive. <laughs> Um, scripture doesn't say it is presumed that they walked, although oftentimes it is depicted that Mary, being nine months pregnant, rode a donkey. All right? Let's see, I haven't thrown any candy in this direction yet. I'm not going to throw it because I don't want to beg one of our. You'll have one. All right. All right, so next up. Actually, I'm pretty sure they did drive. They did drive? They just said they had a man. <laughs> Who invited that guy? <laughs> All right. All right. Blaine and Sue. Okay, I, I, nobody told me, so you guys are good, right? This isn't a surprise. We'll find out. All right, all right. Blaine and Sue are going to surprise us. My wife normally has a really long thing that she puts her sheet music on. So if you see papers flying, uh, all of a sudden, yeah. <laughs> I'm assuming I can borrow one of these. Uh, that would be an excellent question to ask somebody on the Just on top. Right by the uh, base. Where what? The base? Yeah. Oh. Top of the base. Yeah. Right there. There oh, okay. There. Great. You turn that button. I should have asked, asked kind of because he came right up and he knew exactly what to hit. Good job, by the way. Well, she did well. <laughs> Marilyn, that was awesome. That was yes. really beautiful. Thank you so much. That was very fun. I really liked, um, I like going to concerts and seeing people really get into, you know, playing their instruments, uh, whatever, and, and I think all the head shaking and stuff, you were really having fun. So that's the way it's meant to be. <clears throat> Oh, uh -huh. 
thank you guys for blessing us with that. Um, Who was king in Judah when Jesus was born? Yeah. <laughs> All right, Tabby, who was king in Judah? <laughs> we need a translation for that. <laughs> I think the gist of that is she wanted candy. <laughs> King Herod. King Herod. All right. There was somebody back there that also said it. I didn't see who it was. Who was? Oh, you'll get more candy later. All right. So up next, uh, Angie is. Oh, she's already up there. Angie is doing an original song with Steve called Creator of the World. I didn't do that. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody asked for real to do I won't tell you that it was me. Fine. Fine. Yeah. So tonight, um, I just really felt I wanted to do the song this year. It's not a traditional Christmas song. It's not even a traditional perspective of Christmas. Um, but it's just as valid um, because sometimes we, I think, forget that Jesus was always has been and we kind of think about the birth, the focus on the birth of Jesus and um, and um, going back to he was before we were, he was in the beginning and um, kind of just remembering that he has the son of God, God the son, um, second person of the Trinity, this is just a song about where he showed up. He, he, he didn't just show up the night he was born in Bethlehem, although it was the incarnation. It was when he came as a man, you know, to, to die for our sins, was basically why he came. Um, but I just want to kind of think outside the box a little bit and share this with you guys. with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him nothing was made that was made. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. God who at various times and in different ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken to us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him all things were created, all things were created through him and for him. As he considered these things, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. 
for he shall save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us.
have a beautiful movie. Yes. All right. Um, all right. What was Joseph's profession? Joseph, the father of Jesus. Wood carver. <laughs> Carpenter. We'll, we'll, we'll give him one on that. <laughs> what were you going to say, Scott? Carpenter. All right. A uh, little piece of trivia. I don't think he was a carpenter. I don't think he was a woodworker. I think he was a carpenter that was a stonemason. The reason I believe this, you ever been to Nazareth? They don't have a lot of wood, not a lot of trees. A lot of things in Nazareth were made of stone. Can you imagine somebody that is a stone carver? Can you imagine the, the musculature in their hands? Sometimes we see Jesus, we come across, he comes across in pictures as being almost uh, effeminate or weak. I think Jesus was a man's man. He was meek, not weak. All right, so um, next we have Benjamin Satch Luca. I know he's here. I saw him earlier. Right oh, there he is. All right, and they're doing an original song written by Benjamin. So, um, I wrote this song kind of hoping to just remind people that when the Messiah came, he didn't come with only flowers and sunshine and angels singing and all that kind of stuff. That, you know, the angels singing and then the glory and the fact that the Messiah came in the form of a man um, is huge, but he didn't, it's not like Satan wasn't trying to resist that. Uh, when the Messiah came, there was a lot of bloodshed. Um, and his whole ministry involved spiritual warfare, uh, the likes of which we haven't really seen in the world since then, I'm convinced, uh, not to that extent. Um, we won't see probably until the Lord returns, but um, the song, uh, the first half of it is reminding us of the, the grief what that number accompanied. Is he in? What number is he in? The Lord's it? first come. It says it used to come. And... Um, The second half of the song is a reminder to us, as the Gentiles, most of us I think, uh, that Jesus was a Jew and he came to, to reach the people of Israel and they um, rejected him. And so, um, in fact, I'll read, that's why I had my phone out, so I could read you something the Lord said as he approached the city. You are aware of this. Um, I've been to Jerusalem. I've seen their ruins. And the house that was there, which is not there, the ruins that you see when you're there are just the foundation of that glorious house. And um, I wept when I saw the, the people of God trying to reach God, unable to, because they missed the door. Um, and when Jesus was approaching the city, Luke 19, verses 42 through 44, he says, Would that you, even you, had known on this day the things that make for peace, but now they are hidden from your eyes. For the days will come upon you when your enemies will set up a barricade around you and surround you and hem you in on every side and tear you down to the ground, you and your children within you. And they will not leave one stone upon another in you because you did not know the time of your visitation. And so we pray for Israel and their eventual restoration, as Paul tells us in Romans. So these are things to think about, about 
coming of the Messiah. So.
wise men came to visit. Oh, let's see. Okay, we got one over here. Ooh, according to scripture. Three wise men. Three wise men. How many? You, you got that answer from someone else. Scripture does not indicate how many wise men were there, but it does tell us that there were three gifts that were given to Jesus. Do you know what the three gifts were? Okay, what were the three gifts? That's right. All right. That was kind of a dirty trick with me to pull. All right. So next up we have... Uh, Benjamin, Thaddeus, Josh, and Mackenzie singing O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. <laughs> What's that?
All right. Candy to the first person that can tell me how many of those are my kids. <laughs> oh, actually, I saw Sandy's hand first. Sandy, Sandy's all like, oh, I want candy. Oh, really all four, Josh. That's right. That's right. It's a trick question. That's right. All right. So, um, those of you that know me know I don't do spontaneity. Okay. Um, however, I sometimes neglect to tell people when things are happening, and so to them it's spontaneous. Okay, so um, yesterday I was uh, getting ready for the day and I had some Christmas music playing and the song, uh, I Heard the Bells, came on. And it, it just struck a chord with me. Uh, I like the song, I like the, what it presents, the story that it tells. And because I know my kids, well, because they're my kids, um, I sent a text out and I said, hey, I, I need a favor from you guys. And Mackenzie was the only one that responded. <laughs> Although Benjamin had an excuse, he was off searching for meat on, it, on the hoof. So, uh, and, and Thaddeus didn't need to respond because he was in the room when I sent it. Uh, I said, hey, I need a favor. McKenzie's like, what do you need? I said, I want you guys to do I Heard the Bells. And so we went back and forth and she said, well, maybe if I can get the music, I can practice a little bit. Do you know what key Benjamin does it in? Uh, I said, yeah, I think it's the key of high tenor. And she said that didn't help. <laughs> I, I, I said, yeah, I don't know what the key of Benjamin really is anymore. So, um, so I, I kind of put them on the spot, uh, but they did get to practice, right? Yes. Yes. They did practice today. So, so um, be blessed. I heard the bells.
perplexed. Who's, who's leading this? Um, the worship team can go up. It's a congregational just ending song. Okay, all right. So the worship team is going to be up on the stage? Yeah, whoever wants to. All right. All right. Um, get close to the end. How old was Jesus when he was born? <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Zero. 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 That's all that's old. He always was. He always was. I got a lot of candy left. All right, uh, so we are going to end tonight. Steve, are you coming up front? Yes. Okay. All right, so we're going to close tonight. If you would go ahead and rise to your feet, uh, we're going to do a congregational singing of a holy night in the original Latin.
you bring the lights up just a little bit, please? I want to say thank you to our guests that came and shared with us today. Thank you for all that put forward and, and shared their gifts. Uh, blessed evening tonight. We wish you um, a very happy Christmas, that your focus would be on the true gift that we are celebrating this year. If you would bow your heads, we're going to close with a word of prayer. Father, what a privilege it is to come together in fellowship and worship you, to celebrate the greatest gift that has ever been given. Father, I thank you for the many talents that have been shared here tonight. I thank you, Father, for the willingness to come before us and share. I ask, Father, as we move into this uh, celebration of the coming of your Son, that we would keep our hearts and our minds centered on what it is that we're celebrating. And as we take joy in the company of others, the, the good fellowship, the good food, the gifts, I, I ask, Father, that you would help us to remember what the end of all of this truly was. It was a cross and an empty tomb. And I thank you, Father, from the bottom of my heart for the grace that you have extended to us. We pray these things in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. And that wraps up our service for this evening. Thank you for our guests for coming.